everyone and welcome to Shonen Archive, the series in which me and Zenrot go through all the anime of Shonen Jump eventually over time, starting with Gintama. <laughs> over and, decades. Over decades, and if one of us goes down, then we have to find a replacement, so eventually <laughs> the show goes down as uh, every Shonen Jump anime is watched eventually. Starting with Gintama and then also doing Yu-Gi-Oh! GX on the side. I'm Woki and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. Hello, and we're here to talk about Gintama. Previously on the pr- the last episodes, uh, we've decided to stick with the five episode structure, and we're going to be going through episodes thirty one through thirty five today. And we were able to keep up with it, so that's two weeks in a row. I would say it's a pretty good record for us, Zen. <laughs> right, I know. I'm also surprised we were able to see 30 episodes. We made it past the 30 episode mark. And at that point, I think there's nothing stopping us now. I think we're good to go. If the cats couldn't stop us, then nothing will at this point. Unless my computer busts into flames in the middle of me talking right now. Let's hope not. Okay, I checked to make sure if there was any fire. <laughs> no fire this time. Funny enough, one time I was charging my phone, and that's how I knew I had to get a new charger, is that my charger got caught on fire. <laughs> and uh, it came out a tiny spark, and it was like a very quick flame, and I was like, oh. And then it disappeared. That is not ideal. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, oh, okay, uh, uh- new charger time. <laughs> new charge. I had electric tape on it, thinking that I would fix the problem, and it burned through the electric tape. <laughs> Right there, so. Gintama, let's talk about it. Also, thank you very much for everyone who is uh, still sticking with us. I thank you guys very much. It, it uh, motivates us to keep doing the show and doing everything, so thanks a bunch. We never asked for any likes or anything, so it's always appreciated. <laughs> the support in general talking about it is awesome. So, let's get into it, Zen. Tell us what happens in episode 31, which is called... Inconsequential things are particularly difficult to forget, or as Crunchyroll called it, you always remember things, the things that matter the least, which is, seems like a <laughs> little bit more of a... <laughs> uh, right. Yeah, so Gintoki is in traffic, uh, and he gets hit by a car, and he's in the hospital, and it turns out that he got uh, amnesia, and he can't remember anything. And so the gang take him back to Ajab's Gin to try to uh, restore his memory. And as people are telling him about like who he used to be, it's all shitty stuff. <laughs> it's all about like how awful he was. <laughs> Absolutely um, terrible person. <laughs> yeah, they all just hate him. Uh, and then they meet like Katsura, who I don't remember what he's doing, but it's really funny. He's like he's, doing the thing he, where you hold a sign for a store. He says you can't start. It's it's for girls. Go check out my girls. You can grope. The, that's the Elizabeth sign says they're free to grope and stuff like that. Like he says, like you can't start a revolution without money. <laughs> so he's working there. Yeah, for he's him. like a sign a sign player. Yeah. Um. Is it one of those and, dudes uh, that tells you go check out our girls. <laughs> like yeah. on Vegas. And then he's like, oh, uh, you used to be like my disciple, my my, and all this shit. <laughs> and then apprentice. people kept like. Yeah, kept trying to uh, alter his memory, and then like Sachan uh, grabs him, and she's like, uh, she said she's gonna restore his memory, but she's actually trying to turn him into like the husband that she wants. Um, Kagura chases her down, and then uh, eventually they decide that. Oh, it's, it's Ote that decides that she's gonna fix him by hitting him in the head even harder. Um, but then she ends up, like, falling in love with him because he's, like, nice now instead of being a douche. Yeah, it turns uh, And then Kondo the... shows up, who gets mad about it, and he oh, ends up God. eating, um... Oh, like, melted haagen ice cream. They don't call it haagen Well, yeah, he, it's supposed to be. he has melted, it's called bagen dazs <laughs> bagen Um, but it's all melted because he was hiding for so long. And then Kentucky sees the sugar and it starts to come back to him. But then Ote shoves one of her horrible omelets in his and Kondo's mouths. And it gives them both amnesia because that's how <laughs> bad it is. Super amnesia. Uh, and then a spaceship is crashing and they throw him his sword and they're like, stop it like you normally do. Uh, but then Gin says it's impossible for a human to do that. And the ship crashes into the odd jobs building. And then he decides that since apparently his old self sucked anyway, uh, he's just going to go make a new life for himself, and then he leaves. 
Yeah. Telling them specifically, I never paid you. Why would you want to be with someone like me? Consider it. You're basically free. And they are very much like telling him, no, it, we don't care about any of that. Just kind of stay. Which actually kind of is a, li- a little bit touching for me because it was like, ah, it really does enforce the fact of like, yeah, the, the, they complain about it all the time. But if it actually came down to it, they would prefer to keep everything keep going. Even with all the bad habits that he had does, which they kind of get into in the next episode. But yeah, based on everything he's learned from everyone, the old version of himself really sucked. That's the only lesson he learned. Yeah, is that everyone thinks that he sucked. Yeah, I really liked it when um, when Tay was <laughs> so... She was so gung-ho when she realized, like, oh yeah, without all the bad parts of Gin, Gin is actually extremely handsome and he has an amazing voice and he would be perfect to actually <laughs> be marriage material. The problem that always stuck with it is that he was himself, <laughs> so he wasn't actually someone worth caring about. <laughs> Uh, so I like that part. I actually like there was the some of the parts I've got here. Um, I like the beginning when Gintoki's complaining about Shonen Jump. He feels like he should quit Shonen Jump, but the serialization. Yeah, I love how often they use that joke. He's it's like every time he's like, <laughs> I gotta stop reading this shit, and then he's reading it again. He's like, oh yes, the weekly serialization just gets you so much that you can't quit it, and then he gets hit by the car. The guy in the car, um, when Shipaji goes to visit him in the hospital, the Atose and Kagura are like, you mean like, eh, whatever, he's fine, he's Gin. And then the guy who runs him over is like, oh my god, that puts such a weight off my shoulder, and then they immediately start beating him. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I like that joke. I like it with the... Ah, Um... There's something the doctor, like, the doctor plays around with something where he's like, doctor, you really shouldn't be doing this. Like, for some reason, he's playing along with a joke when he really shouldn't be. Um, This continuation with Gintoki's obsession with the weather girl, because they try and jog his memory by doing, like, a lot of weird stuff. Like, they show him his favorite weather girl, and they tell him specifically you like to view it from down below, and (laughs) which is probably another reason why he doesn't think his old life was anything really worth of anything if this is what they're using to uh, jog his memory. There's some actually some good like visuals with the tree because the doctor says that um, the memory is kind of like a tree and various branches kind of fall off when you get amnesia um, or something like trying to say specifically why he can't remember them. For, that's the kind of justification that he has there. And he does occasionally kind of look back at the tree when he's trying to remember everyone. Uh, there's some flashbacks to some previous characters, like the the Kappa. They take them to even um, the idol. They take them basically everywhere trying to get any form of uh, memory out of him, which feels nice for the 30 episodes that we saw beforehand, even though it's literally like, oh, yeah, I remember all these guys. <laughs> the trip down memory lane of the 30 episodes we just watched a little while ago. Uh... I like Sachan trying to steal him, because that seems like the most likely way. But also, every single time he keeps getting hit with amnesia, he turns into a completely different person. Like, when he's with Sachan, he's like, he has a completely different voice. Yeah, it's, he has a totally different voice. It's so fucking funny. Yeah, he has, like, the, the he's regular... He's got, like, the nice anime boy voice. Yeah, he, does, he has, like, the, ah, oh, I guess. <laughs> he has that. Yeah, he and sounds then... like, like, Koichi or something. He does. And then finally, when he gets tired of her shit, he returns back to his <laughs> bass voice. He goes like, will you stop? <laughs> like, I don't want to be with you. <laughs> and then she drops him out. I like the condo stuff just because I like condo in general. When he's showing up with the haagen he's like, I brought ice cream. He's like, how long were you down there? Because it's all melted. Yeah, it's completely melted everywhere. Uh, and also, the, when Kagura forces him to eat, it looks like she's like punching it directly into his mouth. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, I've actually liked the little bit of an emotional thing here at the end when Gintoki is... Un- he, I know for a fact that there's 300 episodes left, but for some reason specifically, well, I know the reason why, is amnesia stories end up getting me in a different emotional level because, believe it or not, in middle school, this happened to me where a friend of mine got amnesia and he forgot me. Really? Yeah, it's it's That's really wild. that is wild because I remember and I had a very similar the things that the characters go through here where you're like trying to be like like trying to explain why your specific points of like 
these like for example me and you talking to each other we can talk about the time where we first kind of got to know each other more where we played Yu-Gi-Oh with each other and we were like doing it online and we didn't have any idea what any of the Yu-Gi-Oh cards can do and we can kind of have a back and forth laugh and go like aha uh-huh, yeah remember that but if it was specifically one of us trying to explain why this moment was important to one of the other ones when the other person has no context or any feelings towards it it sucks <laughs> and i had to do that yeah with a it sounds like it sucks like i had this entire repertoire with my friend who was like we made resident evil jokes and i was like telling him like I w- it was it's actually very sad i don't want him to get too real with most people but i was telling him like yeah oh yeah we had a joke remember resident evil 4 and we made jokes about the like leaves and we would go together and then and, you know, we had all this rep, you know, we go back and forth and I would do the things that we usually do together. And then I looked at him and he's like, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't remember that. And I was like, oh. And then I had to just basically leave a friend behind because he, he couldn't remember me. I tried to be like, well, I'm a friend of yours, so I'll see you around. And I saw him around, but he never remembered me. And so any That's stuff crazy. like this. Yeah, it's crazy. So any stuff like this so at the end when they're like specifically calling out to him i was like oh fuck this is i didn't actually expect because most amnesia stories i think for most people when it's in any form of like media it's very hard for them to be like oh it's just like especially in anime like the someone's forgotten someone but when you're actually trying to deal with it it's something completely different and i think they actually kind of get that across in this episode of the difficulties of trying to get someone to actually legitimately remember you and you have all this like back and forth talk to each other but out of context, it just makes it sound like one, like like here, for example, those were all good moments. But out of context, it just makes him seem like he's a shitty guy. <laughs> yeah. Like a complete dirtbag that he doesn't understand. It seems like his life sucks ass. <laughs> and he's right. Out of context, it does. And it's those kind of memory things that help bring it together. So I ended up really liking yeah, this episode. Yeah, like, like the part when he's like, uh, when he's telling Kagura and Shinpachi that he's leaving. And he's like, I don't know why you would like me. <laughs> Because everything you said about me sucks. And then yeah, the, like, wait, no. <laughs> no, please. Like, it's hard to decide. So I ended up really liking this episode for that reason. And the next one, but we'll talk about that a little bit more. How did you feel about it? As someone who has never had to deal with what I had to deal I with. I have never had an amnesia problem in real life. No. No. Um, How did you I feel enjoyed it? it. It was it was pretty fun. I like the jokes just about everyone being like, wow, this guy used to suck. And now he's cool. <laughs> um, I liked the next one quite a bit more. Uh, but I did enjoy this one. It was good. Yeah, I think the this was pretty good setup, and I think the next episode does it uh, sets off that stuff well. I also did like that his friend shows back up, the super carefree one, and he no one even gives him the time of day. <laughs> like not even Shinpachi and Kagura try and stop him to try and see if he can jog his memories. He just gets arrested <laughs> and he leaves. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, ah, oh, I'm looking for uh, Kimpachi jobs. Uh, I'm looking for Ginto- uh, for. Uh, G- he keeps calling him because uh, Gintoki. He calls him Kintoki. He keeps yeah, like, he calls his him name wrong. like uh, yeah, Odd Jobs Kin. Yeah, I'm looking for Odd Jobs Kin. He's like, well, if you're looking for Odd Jobs Kit Jin, you just literally broke through their office right there. It's like, ah, oh, damn. Oh man. Well, do you know where he is? <laughs> like, he just super yeah. And he's like, well. <laughs> Just super looking on the bright side of things that they kind of go off. So, yeah, I think that's a pretty good episode starter for here. And it's, it's a good setup for episode 13. Apparently, this is also the start of an actual legitimate arc as well. This is considered the first arc of the actual... Uh, um, really? Because it's like a two-episode thing. Yeah, it's a very short arc, but on all things considered. But, um, yeah, it's considered the first arc of it. Which is funny because in this, when it's just two episode, it kind of feels like it's a two parter. But now it's a, it's considered the arc, the um, the memory the memory loss arc. Yeah, there you go. So chapters fifty one, fifty two, and fifty. A very small arc to begin with, but I actually don't know how many chapters kind of go into an arc. Now that I think about it, uh, usually more than three, hmm. but it's Fair. okay to have a small one. Nothing yeah, wrong nothing, with that. Nothing wrong with it. Works out perfectly fine. Let's go into the next episode, which is episode uh, 32. Oh, that's right. No, wait. The the doctor, he looks like Blackjack from 
Tez from the black uh, blackjack is the one of the dudes who made it. No, blackjack is one of the dudes. He's one of the creations from Tezuka who made a uh, Mighty Adam or Astro Boy, as most people know him from, because uh, he has like this scar on him. I was like, why does he have that scar? And then later on, while I was looking at the 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 summary page, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, that's why he looks like that. <laughs> he has the scar there because he's supposed to be blackjack, and I think his name is also a reference to blackjack. So. Just feel like mentioning that specific uh, thing because I was like, oh yeah, he looks he looks familiar to me. I was trying to figure out what reference he was and I could not put my finger on it, but now I know. But anyway, episode 32, which uh, we have here, the literal translation, life moves like a conveyor belt or life moves on like a conveyor belt. Yeah, pretty accurate. <laughs> Good job on the yeah. translation. <laughs> Tell us what it's about, Zen. Uh, so it has been... Like a week or two since Kentucky lost his memory, um, one of the Shinsengumi guys, the one that uh, Hijikata hates, is working in a factory as a spy, trying to find Yama- out Yamakaze. Uh, if there's anything. This- yeah, Yamazaki, right? Yamazaki, Yamazaki. The, I think that's yeah. also the tennis Shinsengumi, the one who's just fucking. Yeah, it's the badminton guy. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the one who's constantly <laughs> fucked up <laughs> every time we've talked yeah. about Shinsengumi. Go He's ahead. trying to. To uh, like find if there's anything uh, weird going on at this factory, and it turns out that Kentoki has been working at this factory as well. Um, In his new life, they kind of interact for a little bit, and they make some jokes. He doesn't remember him, and then they cut back to uh, in the destroyed Odd Jobs Gin. Kagura is in there waiting for Kentoki to come back. And so Shinpachi decides he's going to stay with her, and then Atose gives them the address of the factory where Kentucky's working. Um, the the factory makes these little dolls called Justaways, <laughs> which are just like little stick figure dolls. Um, and then Kondo is also there because he also has amnesia because he ate that horrible omelet. Yeah. Um, Yamazaki's trying to bring Kondo back, and then uh, they drop a Justaway, and it fucking explodes. And it turns out that the Justaways are all bombs, which, mm-hmm. and then dropping the Justaway causes like a chain explosion throughout the whole factory that like destroys it. Um, the factory owner turns out to be an old uh, samurai who is like anti Amanto, like always. Mm-hmm. Um, and it turns out it's because he lost his job as a cop. <laughs> He just got fired. That's like why he's so angry. Yeah. And he made a giant cannon that he wants to use to blow up Edo with. Um, the Shinsengumi come and Kondo regains his memory. And he saves Gintoki and Yamazaki. And then uh, everyone like kind of stands in front of Gintoki uh, to protect him. And they have like a, if you want to kill him, you got to kill all of us moment. Uh, and then Gintoki recovers his memories and grabs his wooden sword and runs up and destroys the cannon. And then um, they walk away back. He leaves with Kagura and Shinpachi and tells him that it's time for them to go home. And then at the very end, uh, it turns out that Kondo lost his memory again. <laughs> and this time he's a robot. He's similar to Gintoki where he changes his voice every single time he loses a memory. This time he's a robot. For some yeah, reason. he's a robot. Yeah. He's like, oh, though. He's like, oh no, <laughs> and it did ends right there. Um, I like the uh, just to go for my likes over here. I like it when Yamazaki finds Gin, and because he's trying, like, the opening is him trying to be like, I'm on a super secret mission here, and I'm undercover, and he immediately blows his cover because he's like out loud saying like, I, he goes like, oh, I'm undercover, and he goes like, oh wait, I shouldn't say that out loud, and he goes to talk. He's like, you remember me, right? And I was like, actually, I think my note here is, has Yamakaze ever even talked to Kentucky? <laughs> <laughs> because he's treating it like he's like they have i think they did in the panty thief episode okay that would make sense but he treats it like he's like one of the main which i think makes is the joke is that he's treating it like he's part of the main cast of people he would remember when in actuality he has had maybe like one or two conversations with him at best and passing mention even yamakaze says uh yamazaki says like stuff like uh, but I guess he says later, like, I don't understand why Hijikata or Ko- Akita had such, or Ka- and Kondo have such high views for you. He just doesn't understand it with the memory loss. 
Um, I liked it when they showed Kagura still waiting because I think she has like a buttload of seaweed that she's been eating, kind of just sitting there waiting for his return. Um, the specific talk about um, between him, between her and Shinpachi, where Shinpachi's kind of telling her like maybe you shouldn't be coming here because it's dangerous to kind of just be around here. Um, and he again says like what the doctor told him, which is that the memory is like a tree and unimportant branches will fall off. And that's just all we can do about it. There's like nothing we can do for this specifically. And Kakura fights back and says like, I, I refuse to be a broken branch. If it's going to be like that, then it's, it, the tree will be strong and I'll stick with Kintoki. And that's enough for him to kind of go like, all right, I'll wait. He basically says like, well, he better come soon. And he eats some of her seaweed and he says, like, he better come soon, otherwise our poop will turn green. And then the beautiful meal moment is uh, immediately stopped when she attacks him for eating her seaweed without permission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she gets pissed off. Because they have, like, this sweet moment where they're, like, uh, bonding. And then she looks at him and she's like, don't eat that without my permission. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. And then Tosi shows up and tells him to, like, yo, go enough fooling around go bring him back i know where he is which is nice because again it's also showing that she is the the world's only good landlord in anything and she actively cares about uh gintoki and wants him back as well even if she doesn't outright say it which isn't always nice um gintoki's also amazing at making these uh just just away dolls <laughs> which is really yeah funny he's when they show incredibly him. good at it He's just going, woo, 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 and they're, like, so amazed, like, oh, he's going to make vice president with that level of speed. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, and they're like, you you award vice president based on assembly line speed? Your business will never last. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a really um, funny moment when they have the, when he finds Kondo finally, because he calls him Gorilla, because gorilla san because his memory is gone and he's immediately like he finds kondo he's like i found the idiot we need to bring him back and he's telling me like you know he lost my memory just like me and when they show him with the just away dolls he has like a whole buttload of them that he's like holding on to because he wants to be he says uh let me see if i got the, the thing right here i want people to be proud of me and i want to be special and he's like crying and when he's crying the just away dolls are yeah, also he, crying yeah what does he say he says um I promised my father I would be special at something, and it doesn't matter what that thing is. <laughs> so funny, and he, the, the 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 tears <laughs> on the Just Away dolls are so fun. The 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 Just Away dolls are so funny, and then when they get thrown, they immediately return back to their their base form as well, which is good. And then he also refuses to get rid of them as well. He always holds on to them. Even when they're running away, he's like, those things are explosive. You should get rid of them. And he's like, no, I refuse. Um, okay, also, when they're ready to go take back the factory, Okita shows up with, like, a huge-ass gun. And he's ready to... They basically are using them as, like, hostages. Um, Yamazaki, um, Gin, and... Uh... Oh, no. <laughs> Kondo? I don't know why the, the name literally went away from my mind when I can see it right in front of me. But they're using him as hostages, and uh, Okita makes a huge lie saying that Kondo said if he was ever in a situation like this to shoot him, it would be okay to shoot him and kill him that way. Yeah, he said, well, he, said uh, he, told me, he told me if he was ever held hostage, it would be okay. And then they were like, <laughs> did he really? It's like, maybe. Maybe. He might have. You might have. And uh, another moment which I really liked from Kondo because uh, actually, no, his memory would no, his memory comes back to him when they're shooting up, and he has like blood. I think like a spike enters his his head, and he's able to remember after the gun is shot near him, and so he's able to remember everything. And when they're ready to go get saving, I think Yam Yamaz uh, Yamazaki says like we can just go ourselves. And Gin says, you can go without me. And Kondo says, oh, damn it, I'm not going to leave him behind. And he actually stopped. He, he stays behind to help him, which I thought was really nice because actually Kondo, in his actual memory, hates Gin because he keeps thinking that that's the man who's stopping him from getting with Tay, even though he's delusional. On, and there's multiple reasons why he can't get with her. But the fact that he stays behind and goes like, no, I still need to protect him. And he actually does it again when they're being shot at from the back and he protects him again. 
and that's being that being one of the moments where um like exactly when uh, Kagura and Shinpachi come back and they're there to rescue him where it finally kind of dawns on him that there are people that care about him and that there's people that are willing to kind of stick up with him even though he doesn't under like you said everything he knows about his past is that he was a shitty person and he doesn't understand why anyone would like that person which is the whole reason why he wants to kind of try and be this new life and i think he even has a new name i forget the new name but i'm pretty sure he had a new name um but the entire memory of everyone kind of standing behind him and protecting him makes him remind reminds him of finally is able to jog his memory and kind of re- re- repairs the tree in his mind and then they actually showed the ch- uh, the tree being repaired of it being like uh, kind of like black and white and then when all the memories come back it's very colorful and everything comes back to him and then he has like the big cool hero moment where he stops the <laughs> he does the impossible thing i know human could do and he stops the giant um uh the giant gun with a sword he just slashes it with a with a with a wooden sword he's able to slash it and he comes back so fantastic uh comeback scene by the way yes fantastic so good so good when he's the little smile he does after he destroys the the gun and he says thank you very much for helping me good yeah that was a, that was a top quality uh return scene exactly they do some great ones in that one but that one was fantastic to me so i really i ended up really liking this episode the two-parter that we have here together um were some great stuff and in my mind that's kind of the this specific episode it's between this one and the later one that i would think of of in terms of which one would be the one i like most but this one probably in the, as we're talking it out right now, this one is probably the one I like the most, just because it kind of gives a lot of like uh, it 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 inter- inter- it, it like we've said before that he his character Kintoki's character is that he's kind of shitty, but he has a thing about him that makes people like him, and he kind of shows that here. And it's funny because with his memory gone and he only sees the shitty parts, he doesn't see the reason why anyone would kind of like him at all. And once he's able to kind of see it and it reinforces it, I think it it was very nice. It was kind of like a good way. It, this was a this this entire arc was a long roundabout way of saying, "Man, Toki's pretty awesome." <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so I liked it. How would you feel about this episode? I really liked it. It's probably my favorite one. Um, I. I I watched them like a week ago, so I might say that again when I remember the next ones that we talk about uh, from seeing them. But this one was really good. The scene of Gintoki coming back and taking his sword from Shinpachi and everyone just being like, oh, yeah, (laughs) he's back. Oh, it was so good. It was so fucking good. And he keeps calling Yamazaki Jimmy. He keeps calling him Jimmy. He's calling him Jimmy. Jimmy. It's really funny. Jimmy. And he's saying it in like, in like, because obviously there's not like a word for Jimmy in Japanese. Yeah. So he's just constantly saying it with like a really strong Japanese accent. Yes. <laughs> Which is so fantastic. fucking funny. Apparently the the based off of this trivia that I'm seeing here, the this is a uh, Jimmy is a reference to the phrase uh Jim it's just J G no not G J I M I which means plain. <laughs> it's pretty That's good. Funny. It is. So yeah, good good episode on this one. Let's go on to the next one. I really didn't expect all the memory stuff to come back. It was like, damn, I did. It's very very rare for an amnesia because most, like I said, there's a lot of amnesia stuff in a lot of uh, uh, a lot of media, and most of it doesn't really get me in the way that the these two episodes kind of got me, where it actually felt like relatable in some way but they actually did a very good job on it which i was impressed by i was like damn i can't believe the one that i can't believe the anime that featured a character saying go shit yourself is also the one that can make me feel oh my god that actually might be my favorite episode that's the yeah that's why i'm like we need we need to we need to wait till we get to that but i also really (laughs) like that episode that episode's incredible no, that, wait, they're all incredible, because there's yes. the one where Shinpachi goes out with the cat girl. Yes! And that, that part's not that funny, 
but the part where Kondo and Katsura are both the fruit punch samurai. Yes, that one. That was I was about to say that entire so scene. Fuck, okay, yeah, we got to keep going. Yeah, we There's no bad going. episode. We'll get, we'll, no, there wasn't. We'll keep going. I just wanted to give this one its due because we're gonna get lost in that one. And I knew the second the phrase where it said "go go kill yourself," I was like, "Shit, this is the episode." <laughs> Literally, when he pulls the knife at his throat and he just says, "Crap." What? Crap yourself, yourself right now. <laughs> Crap yourself right now. <laughs> uh, episode 33. Its name is called Mistaken Someone's Name is Rude or Mistaking Someone's Name is Rude. Yeah, it goes perfectly fine either way. Tell us about what it is about, Zen. So this one is... uh. Takamoto wants to fix their place because he is the one that crashed his spaceship into it and destroyed it. Mm -hmm. So he sends these two uh, Amanso that look like a red Oni and a blue Oni to, uh, they're like the best carpenters in the galaxy or whatever. Yeah. And they're fixing up the place, but the the group is being like shitheads. <laughs> and they're like, oh, where's the chandelier? And I'm like, it's not a fucking chandelier. It was and, the, uh, where's the, 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 the ladder to the third floor. <laughs> Yeah, Kentucky's like, where's the steps that lead to the third floor? Um, and they're being dicks to him, and so Gintoki starts telling him this story about uh, Mokichi. It's like this fictional character that the brothers think is real. Um, and they get like super emotionally attached, and so they start <laughs> working harder and harder uh, every time Gintoki keeps making up Mokichi stories, and eventually they decide they want a flying castle as their house. Yeah, they said from, um, from Howl's movie? No, not Howl's movie. From Castle in the Sky. Yeah. And uh, eventually they find out Mokichi's fake and they feel cheated, but then Gintoki's like, no, don't you understand? Mokichi exists inside the heart of all carpenters. And they go yeah. back and build them a castle that can fly. Yeah, it, it ends with the the entire castle being like someone comes to visit them. Like it's a it's they said specifically there's a parody of a Japanese show, and they ring the doorbell and the skin, <laughs> their their apartment goes flying to the point where they're left with just the shitty thing that they had previously. <laughs> but left with no yeah, because the, when they ring the doorbell, it like makes the house lift off. Yeah, and they're in the debris. And, and there's like news crews outside and shit. Yeah, because they wanted to see this amazing castle <laughs> in the sky. <laughs> That also had um, <laughs> uh, the Pantheon inside of it. Like, it was crazy how tricked out it was. Um, this episode, I think, was also pretty funny because they just keep going back to this fucking story <laughs> of Mokichi. Um, of, yeah, uh, Mokichi. Was... And they're, like, crying over it. And they keep screaming, like, Mokichi. Yeah, and, and then um, Otose at night Otose is, like, is outside, like, who is, who is Mokichi? <laughs> Yeah, she, and by the, she's like, Mokichi. She says, here's it one night, and then the second night she goes like, who is, why do they keep saying Mokichi? And by the third night, she's just like, who is he? <laughs> she's like so tired of it. Why are they screaming this man's name for three nights in a row? <laughs> but that it's story, so good. yeah, the, the fact that they keep telling the story, they only show you the one story of Mokichi, and it's like the super like, uh, it's very clear. It's like he ends up getting tricked. I think that's the story, right? Is that Mokichi keeps being told to do things and he's being cheated, um, which is what they're doing to them. <laughs> so it's that's why he's telling the story. He's like, this is what we're doing to you, basically. Um, but the difference is that Mokichi takes it as like, this is just a way for me to improve to be a carpenter. And that story is so moving that it's enough for them to, uh, continue working on the first night. And then when he tells them the story again, he doesn't show, they don't show you what they say, but as they're crying and they're working on it, he's like, I never knew Mokichi had such a dark backstory to him. Yeah. What, what was it? What is it when they are like talking, when they're trying to make the house that flies. And so it's like, uh, we need to like building room? that machine. Yeah, and they go to take the break, and he's like, we're him. We're Mokichi. And he's like, you think so? <laughs> like, yeah, we share his heart. Yes, you don't think Mokichi <laughs> took a coffee break and looked at his work after? <laughs> and then they show Mokichi drinking a coffee and looking at his work being satisfied? It's like, you're right. We should do it. And then the fact that Gid tells the story, when he tells it the third time, and he's totally, like, caught. There's, like, no way. He's like, let me tell you another story. You are Mokichi. He basically says, without saying it outright, he says the Mokichi were the friends we made along the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. 
It is, and <laughs> it's such a simple premise where they just can't, they do it. They they trick them, and they're being such shitheads about what they want. Like Kagura wants a bed, like they didn't improve her room enough, and she wants the a yeah. She's room. like she's wanted thirty tatami mats, and they're like that's bigger <laughs> than the entire room. Yeah, they keep going, asking for crazier and crazier things. Like I said, they they want them to build the Pantheon, and they want them to build the castle in the sky, and he says, we can't do that, that's a copyright infringement, we literally couldn't build it if we wanted. And then at the end, for them to build it, and for them to get their comeuppance was pretty great. Uh, There's also an ending bit, which I completely forgot, where it's, um... Who shows up? The... Is it Hito- his No, not Hitose. It's, um... Shit, who shows up at the end? The Remember the Seaman? The, the Seaman parody where it says a game where you uh, where it's Seaman, but instead of it's Seaman, it's an un, unemployed man instead? I don't remember. It's, uh, sh- Shades. Shades Man. Oh, uh, Hatsu... I know there's so many characters never, to remember. I can never remember character names because there's so many incidental characters in this. There are. That's um, what I'm trying to remember. He was also he's uh, he appears in the next episode as the uh, the fallen Hichi, angel. No, Samurai. not Hijikata. It starts with an H, doesn't it? It does. That's what's killing me. It's the shit. Oh man, it's gonna kill me if I do not remember his name. It should be. Let me see. Maybe it's on the episode list for thirty-four. Because there's only a cameo at the end where he's specifically talking Hasegawa. about Hasegawa. Hasegawa. There we go, man. Hasegawa is talking about the Seaman parody where you're talking to Hasegawa and you have to be like, you have to stop him from killing himself. Like, there's so many. Like, it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. It's like a Tamagotchi, but he's trying to kill himself. Yeah, he's trying to kill himself. He's like, if you see an old lady, if you see a lady walking by, you have to scream at her. <laughs> it's such a long parody of it. It's so fucking funny, and I was like, I would play this game <laughs> immediately. It's it's... Su- yeah, it's like super long. It's really funny. It is. So yeah, that was this episode. It was a good uh, follow up. You forgot. <laughs> It, yeah, it's it's but it's really... like if you see him throwing a rope up onto the ceiling, <laughs> you have to stop him. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. It it's been a while since we've had Hasegawa and everything, but every t- I I don't know something about Hasegawa is just fucking funny. How much this man's life has been ruined to the point where even where he thinks about characters who have been in love, Shinpachi doesn't even think about him, even though he's the only character who has been married, and the only reason he oh, got, yeah. <laughs> the only reason he's not married is because of him. <laughs> Like the disrespect. Oh, it's so fucking funny. Yeah. So this episode <laughs> was really good. I think it was a good follow up to the previous one, where it's like our house is destroyed. They have one bit. It's really good. <laughs> the bit gets paid off. They kind of get just desserts for them acting like assholes with their house being still destroyed at the end. And that bit with Hasegawa was just so fucking funny. <laughs> with... Especially with the seaman parody. So, like you said, I don't think there was a bad episode, this one. It was just kind of all enjoyable or had enjoyable politics all throughout. And this this one. Yeah, no, they were all good. Uh, how'd you feel about the episode? It was probably the weakest in terms of, like, getting reactions out of me. Because mm-hmm. um, the Mokishi bit is funny, but like, it's not that funny. The it's funniest bit was the Hasegawa thing. <laughs> It is for sure. Um, it's definitely more of a bit of like, ha. Huh, that's it's more funny when you talk to someone about how <laughs> dedicated it is than when you're actually watching it. When you're just kind of going like, ah, yes, good, good bit here. But then when you're talking to someone, it's like the I guess similar to their building of it, the idea of mo- <laughs> of, of mochi mochi <laughs> is funnier than what he actually is on the screen. <laughs> Sorry, continue with what you're saying. That was it, really. Just it was a. Uh, it was probably the least like exciting of the ones. Yeah. Um. That we watched this week, but it was still good. I just uh, yeah. there was no bad episode, but this is probably the one I liked the least. It, I think it really goes to show how well the other episodes did in comparison. If this one's a pretty weak one, <laughs> even with yeah, that amazing. Yeah, this was bit still of, a really good episode. Yes, it was still really good. It's just like 
in the, in terms of the crop that we have, a very strong five episode crop. Which, funny enough, someone in the comments uh, last week was saying, I remember the first two episodes being very like good for the, the like well done and then the other ones are really funny so i'm really looking forward to you guys watching it. and i was like okay i'll remember that he was right <laughs> they were really good yeah. and really funny <laughs> they're really good <laughs> so let's talk about this one because this one actually funny enough we may as well go into it because this one's technically starts episode 34 is love doesn't require a manual and it will continue into episode 35 it's not a part two they just ran out of time. It was like not not ran out of time. They had too much of the episode, and basically they had to wait. You had to wait an entire week to see the end of the episode. Basically, so uh, let's go into it. Love doesn't require a manual, or as uh, the site has it here, love doesn't require a manual. Perfect translation once again. Ten out of ten. <laughs> ten out of ten. Uh, go ahead, Zen. So this is the one where Shimpachi. Uh, falls in love with the cat girl. They're they're on the it's the Sioux fan club, and they're mm-hmm. on like a like a subway train or something. It's like a public transit. I don't remember if it's a train or a bus. Um, yeah, they're on. I they're think it's on train. A train because it's Japan. Yeah, <laughs> so it has to be right. Right. Yeah, it's a train. Train. Yeah. Um, and one of the members of the fan club says that he thinks that the cat ears uh are really cute on the new idol, and it's like a big deal that they have cat ears. Um, yes, they're having a whole fight. And he gets, like, it. furious. And, like, he started... I think he, like, beats the shit out of the guy. He does. Um, I also think this is, the, this is his um, friend, right? The one from the previous episode? The one who was being... The one who shit himself? No, no. It's just the sergeant. Just, the, like, a generic... Okay. I don't think this character is even in it. No, like, he's in, he is in it. Or because it, he has the blonde hair. He's just in the background, though. They don't mention his name. Is he? I didn't think yeah. it was him. I thought it was just like the generic like sergeant of the fan club. I don't think he's the sergeant, um, but I think he's somewhere there. I think he's somewhere in the background. I remember that. Oh, he maybe. Was, maybe he's yeah. like part of the group. He's, he's, he's yeah, joined the group. He's, like... he's joined the idol-loving yeah. group. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he's like furious about it. And then a drunk... Um... Matsudaria? Is that how you pronounce the, it? The police Matsu? chief. Ma- Ma- yeah. I- Matsu. Let's it's like Matsu. Matsuida or something like that. Yeah. Um, I just call him Matsu. He uh, is like harassing her, and she freaks out. And Shimpachi uh, throws the sergeant, like throws the sergeant at him. Yeah, and knocks him out, and he accidentally helps her. Um, <clears throat> and he's like not able to get her out of his mind because he thinks she's really cute, uh, even though he's like a, all about like not um cat ears. <laughs> yeah, he's like he, trying to be very anti cat ears. He was actually he, shitting. on He him. can't stop. <laughs> Yeah, he was like talking a bunch of shit about him, um, but he can't stop like thinking she's really cute. And she mails him a box that uh, has cat ears in it for him to wear. Um, and he's like, "I gotta be an adult about this. Sue would never be with me, but this person might." Um, and so he decides to go on the date. And then Kintoki, Kagura, and uh, Ote follow them. And uh, oh, actually, no. This is before they go on the date. He, this is when he goes to the forum. Yeah, he's very nervous. And he's like he goes asking, to a forum. Yeah, he goes to a forum for old samurai to like uh, ask them for advice. Um, and he sees a bunch of different characters, like, and their online names. Yeah, and fruit, uh, fruit there's two samurai, that are the, the fruit punch angels. samurai. Yeah, the fallen angel samurai, the fruit chinpo samurai, and the silver samurai are the four he meets on the online. Yeah, and then he thinks the Silver Samurai is Gintoki, but it's actually Sachan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> posing as him. Posing and as it, her and she does like the she does the online email chain thing. She's like, make sure to forward this to forty of your friends, or Sachan will kill you in the middle of the night. It's, it's not. I know it's, it's not true because even... four of my friends died this way. <laughs> it's not even specific. She doesn't say for forty. She wants for a thousand. She asks for like a large amount because eventually the fall the not the fall the fruit samurai and the fruit chimpo samurai going like we need to team up. <laughs> There's too many. We're gonna die. We need to team up. You take five hundred. I take five hundred. Then they they say they have to meet in person to, to get it done. But they start. A yeah, they, when they want to meet in person, <laughs> <laughs> and they say be holding a fruit mix in your right hand. <laughs> Yes, and then when they do meet, he goes like, "Oh, I'm sorry, you were." They're like standing right next to each other. He's like, "You said to be holding it from the right." He's like, "Oh, forgive me. I meant from the perspective of the person." 
Yeah, he was like, oh, I was holding it in the right from the perspective of the viewer. <laughs> and then they, this reveal where they they show each other what, who they are, and then they realize that... Because Katsura is supposed to be like a super wanted terrorist in Kondo. He's, yeah, he's, he's like a wanted criminal, yeah. And they're acting so buddy-buddy with him, and... Uh... <laughs> Fucking the fruit samurai. He apologizes for being so mean on the cyberspace, and by that he yeah, he's like, I'm sorry for being so rude in cyberspace. And he, what he does is that when 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 Shipachi just asks the question, and he asks him specifically, like, what do I do in this love situation? Fruit Punch basically says, like, this is not a uh, this is not a meeting place for your girlish ideas. <laughs> for what you could do. Yeah, because he's, like, trying to use it to do the whole, like, uh, we gotta save Japan shit. Yeah. And <laughs> Shinpachi goes, like, I don't know what to do. Tell me what to do. And his response is just typing over and over again, go kill yourself, go- commit seppuku. Commit yeah, it's commit like, seppuku. commit seppuku over and over again. <laughs> but the translation on Country Roll is just, like, go kill yourself, go kill yourself. It's, go kill yeah, it's just, it's just kill yourself, kill, kill yourself, yourself, kill, kill yourself. yourself. And eventually... <laughs> Oh my god, this fucking interaction is so good because then Fallen Angel starts talking and he thinks it's a woman. And it's not. It's Hasegawa and his work of the fucking convenience store pretending to be a woman. And he thinks he's... Uh, yeah, and he's like thinks it's so funny. He's like, haha. And then he convinces someone to meet... Because he keeps asking, can we meet IRL? And someone says who thought they thought was the Fruit Punch Samurai. And he goes, ha, loser, go watch porn. I'm a man. You fell for it. And it turns out the person he tricked wasn't the fr- the Fruit Punch Samurai. It was the Fruit Chinpo Samurai. And the Fruit Chinpo Samurai, I think, starts having a fight with the Fruit uh, with the fruit Punch one. Because he's like, you need to change your name. It's exactly the same as mine. Yeah, it's so too we- similar to mine. <laughs> And then he goes like, and then he says, commit seppuku, and then he's going back at him, commit seppuku, and he's like going back and forth saying, kill yourself, no, you kill yourself, kill yourself. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's so funny. It's so fucking funny, he's just like, can so we be funny. adults about this? And he's looking at it, and then the the reveal of the Silver Samurai, when she fucking reveals that it's actually her pretending to be basically Gintoki, because on, on the online thing on the voice, they do the voice, and you hear Gintoki giving the advice, and you think, "Yeah, it's, it's Gintoki talking." But then, and then he... it reveals that it's her, <laughs> and she finishes, and she's like, "What does she say?" She's like, "Just like uh, I, Gintoki, and my <laughs> wonderful future Girl, wife, <laughs> Girl, slash girlfriend, who's a ninja and is super <laughs> sexy, and he's like just basically <laughs> giving herself up." <laughs> Oh my god, this fuck this bit was so fucking funny. I didn't actually want it to it's, end. Yeah. <laughs> when it went back to the character, I was like, oh. So fucking funny. Yeah, it's a lot funnier than the main bit. Yeah. Um. Which uh, the main bit I liked because of how anti cat girl it is. But this bit right here, I cared more about when the fruit chinpo samurai met the fruit fudge one. That was the one I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I would have much rather watched an episode of them trying to get five hundred people to accept that, uh uh, Gintoki and Sachan are in madly deeply in love at that point. <laughs> but it was a really good bit, especially because it's also like old internet, because it's not like our internet anymore. It was the old style of forums. This is like pre Reddit, even it, because in 2006 it was like uh, message boards at that point, right? Yeah, it's like straight up, an- it was like a 4chan board. Yeah, basically. So it was actually kind of a nice kick to see all that stuff. <laughs> But anyway, that's that part. We had to talk about that part. Because I was fucking dying. <laughs> yeah, that shit was so fucking funny. Yes. So, yeah, continue uh, but anyway, with the, episode, they, the cat girl. He goes on a date with the cat girl, and, um... Gintoki, Ote, and uh, Kagura follow them. <clears throat> uh... And they're, like, watching the date, and Kagura and Ote are getting all pissed off, and Gintoki's like, what the fuck is your problem? Like... <laughs> This is, what does he say? I used to think that uh, Shimpachi had like a weird sister complex, but I think you're the one with a weird you brother, brother complex. complex. And she's like, how dare yeah. you call me one of those? And, I forget what they call uh, brother complex, but she says it specifically. And then uh, they're like, both of them are getting really pissed off anytime she does anything. <laughs> they're getting like really mad about it. Yeah, super angry, uh, super pissed. Yeah, like at one point he takes her hand and walks away and it walks them out of the frame and then behind them in the frame is just the two of them beating the shit out of Gintoki <laughs> in the background and he's, he's there they're just so angry he's like don't do it to me do it to her yeah and he's like why are you hitting me 
Um, uh, and so they oh, end up going to a funny. love tale together, and the episode ends with. I know Shinpachi's having like this deep monologue about how we can't show it off. Our, our show's already off at the golden hour. We've, <laughs> we've yeah, we've, he's like we already lost the the time slot. What can we do? And then. <laughs> It, it, it she basically has a shower he's like why don't you go shower up first and he's like i don't care if the show gets canceled i'm gonna become a man yeah as soon as she's like why don't you go ahead and shower he's like yeah, i'm in, yeah, <laughs> I'm he's all like, in. I, don't, I don't care if the show gets canceled <laughs> and then it basically ends on a cliffhanger um and then i think they explain in the little bits here like we actually have overflow uh, we can't go over the 30 minutes. <laughs> Apologies, and we'll get to do it in the next episode. Yeah, it's like, it's really weird because there's like 10 seconds um, of like the next episode. Like, it's just the ending, really. Yeah, and it's basically explaining the situation. Uh, so this episode, get, to give my thoughts on it, I really like, and I'll go into it, I think, in the next episode. Because this episode isn't really about that one, but it does set up what the overall feeling is, which I feel Gintama has a very specific agenda about uh, cat girls, which I think is hilarious. Uh, but I like it when Shinpachi is uh, in the beginning when he's like, he tosses the other dude in his club and he, f- he tosses him like head first <laughs> into Mats- Matsu. <laughs> like he's like a straight boy. Yeah, he like he- chucks him. Yeah. And-, and while he's chucking him saying like, uh, cat girls ain't shit. I've smelled the bathroom after Catherine because there's a cat girl that lives underneath us and her litter box smells like shit. Yeah. He's like, I know a cat girl. They ain't, they ain't nothing. Like, his his specific diatribe against cat girls is so fucking funny when he's going with that. Obviously, all the stuff online was fucking sold. And also him trying to, him having, like, this inner monologue of, should I go on the date? Is this even a date? And meanwhile, Gintoki and Kagura are in the background just kind of laughing and making fun of the entire situation that he's in. And when he's thinking about people who would get advice for love, he says, like, um, Gintoki's hopeless. Kagura eats too much. <laughs> like, that's specific. Like, the, his specific reason for Kagura is she's just a girl who eats a lot. I think that's his the thing about him. I can't ask my sister. She says that she's protecting her chastity for um, for marriage, and she's not really... <laughs> I don't think she's ever getting married. <laughs> and the, the picture they show of her is her, like, punching one of the dudes she's working at the bar with. <laughs> uh, because she works yeah, at Yeah, the... it doesn't... Isn't the resolution of that that eventually he's like, oh my god, I don't have anyone that I can no, trust? Because he, th- he does, like, a whole <laughs> list of absolutely everyone on the show, and he's like, none of these people can help me. <laughs> and that's one of the reason why he has to go online and ask for him. The entire online sequence is super fucking funny. <laughs> it's amazing. It's so funny. It's so good. The the it's especially funny when you see it in text form because seeing the computer and it's just like scrolling down constant. Go commit seppuku. Go kill yourself. Go get yourself. I'm so worried about this episode getting <laughs> hitting my channel cause because of how kill- often we say that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, if you don't, uh, if you don't. Um, tell on us then hopefully the youtube will be kind to me but anyway it's really funny that part specifically um when they're doing a spy on him and tay is just like so anti because the second she sees that it's a cat girl she's like oh i hate cats they're terrible and he's like well it could be a i think kintoki's uh assertion is well maybe it's a dog and she's like terrible that would <laughs> that doesn't look any yeah because like- kintoki's like well what if it's a dog girl and she's like it's still not Good. <laughs> it's still not good enough because they'll give birth to a comedian. Apparently, it's a joke about specifically a Japanese comedian. But Gintoki's trying to reassure him. He's like, oh, for all we know, they could get a litter of puppies of Shinpachi puppies. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> their immediate thoughts of like this, the whoever Shinpachi is dating, this could potentially be the hair of our clan. <laughs> like that's what she's looking forward to. Is like this person is going to be having the future children of our of our people. I need to approve of them. And also the fact that Kagura is like not re- it's, it's it's what I noticed is Kagura is not really angry at the situation because it feels out of character. But what she actually is is that she's picking up on Tay's energy, and because she respects her so much, she's following suit. Because if you notice carefully in the animation, Tay when like uh, there's a part where they're just like super done with it, 
Tay will actually is the first one to actually like uh, break the book she's reading because she like tears it apart. But she is actually first, and then Kagura follows right after her and keeps up that energy. She's basically supporting her in this anti <laughs> this girl. <laughs> That's they're... so fucking funny. Yeah, they're like she's like so supportive of her because she respects her sister. He's like, if this is what she feel, then fuck this cat girl. I agree with her. And uh, Shinpachi also at the end just like not caring about what happens to the show is was really funny to me because again they give him like a super detailed animation at the end where he's like I'm ready to become a man like all he needed to see is like I don't think we can do this this is such a bad idea we've lost our time slot this is so terrible and then when it's about to happen he's like fuck it <laughs> let's go yeah he's like I don't give a shit yeah fuck this show I'm about to have sex <laughs> with this cat girl <laughs> And, yeah, and then we'll continue on with the specific thoughts. But I ended up really like it. I thought it was funny, <laughs> so it worked for me. Uh, and I like the Catgirl stuff specifically, too, which was fun. The, the, the reaction to it, and especially how it pays off in the next episode, I thought was really good. So that's my specific feelings on it. What about you, Zen? Yeah, I liked it a lot. Uh, the The online portion was definitely the highlight. That shit was mm. fucking amazing. Steals the, um, steals the episode, to be honest. It does. It completely steals 100%. the episode. Um it's really good the whole way through, though. The whole thing's funny. The cat girl setup is funny. Mm-hmm. Um, all like the stereotypical anime moments that they end up in are funny. <laughs> yeah. um, the, the whole thing's funny. It's good. It's high quality. Good, good shit. <laughs> That's good shit, pal. In this one, and finally, let's go into the next one, which is it's it's funny where I think of like how do you top this one, but I think this one actually does because it gives the payoff to this episode. And introduces the next episode, which is really good. So this episode is uh, called... One moment. Uh... Love doesn't require a manual continued, and you can't judge a person by his appearance. And that's basically the same for both. So good translation. Good on you. Uh, go ahead, Zen. Yeah, so the conclusion to uh, the first plot is that the cat girl is actually like a thief. Who a black, a black cat thief, I think. Yeah, and her tagline is like, um, "I steal men's love, but since you can't see love, I took his wallet." <laughs> 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 um, and then they chase her down, and Shinpachi stops them, and it seems like he's having like a a nice guy moment, and they're all like, "Wow, you you're forgiving her," and then he's like, "Of course not," and he hits her with his sword. <laughs> Single strike. <laughs> he fucking decimates yeah. this cat girl. Yeah, he like destroys this cat girl. And Congress um, says, so cool, Shinpachi. And then, uh, yeah, the episode ends with him pledging to be more loyal to Otsu. Yep. And then it's revealed um, that Otsu does the cat girl ears, where he's like, it doesn't matter if you have cat girl ears. And then she does, she puts them on, and he immediately falls for it. Yep. Uh, and then the next one, which is really fucking funny, mm-hmm. is uh, Matsu, the police chief, is trying to scare away or break up like his daughter's boyfriend. And um, they go to the amusement park, and he enlists Hijikata, Kondo, and uh, Sogo to try to like stop him. And uh, Sogo ends up getting really into it, while the other ones are kind of not. And so he's like, they're going to get on a Ferris wheel. And so uh, Hijikata's like, alright, well, well, at first I think the police chief wants to kill him. Yeah, he does want to kill him. He just wants but, to straight up yeah. smoke him. But Hijikata's like, why don't we just break them up? And so they're like, fine. And so Okita goes on the um, coaster. The uh, roller coaster, and he gets behind them, and he pulls a knife on the boyfriend and sticks it to his throat, and just tells him to fucking shit his pants. (laughs) (laughs) It's so funny. It's it's dead serious. He's literally just like, "Crap, crap your pants." Yeah, the music in the background does a lot where it's like, (laughs) like it's super. Yeah, it's like really intense. Um. Um, and they, uh, 
Oh, I Sorry, I can't say, I, I, just... I, I actually uh, messed up a little bit. I made you <coughs> skip past it, but he doesn't want to go on the roller coaster until Ki- Okita puts a knife behind him and says, you're going on it. Like, that's, yeah. how, he, that's how he gets him on it, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, uh, the, the still image, I think you tweeted it too, of yeah. just him holding the knife to the dude's throat and saying, shit, your pants is so funny fucking funny it, i did there was nothing <laughs> i could say about it i just posted that shit raw going you know what it's <laughs> Go. so fucking funny um crap your pants <laughs> crap your pants right now uh and so they go on the ride and then at the end of the ride the boyfriend reveals that he did in fact crap his pants uh and they're like why are you sitting so high in your chair because <laughs> he, he did shit himself and then the girlfriend's like oh thank god i, I did too <laughs> and then it says we've shared a moment through bowels and we're connected yeah to and they're bowels. like more in love and then they look over to Kondo and they're like wait why are you sitting so high in your chair <laughs> Kondo also <laughs> shit himself, himself. On the ride. <laughs> uh-huh. and then they have a change of clothes <laughs> <laughs> and then um they get off the roller coaster, uh, and they're like, Sogo, you gotta stop, that's too much. And so they're like, okay, uh, that's it, we're gonna, they're on like, uh, the Ferris wheel. And they go, and they're just gonna shoot him out of the Ferris wheel <laughs> with a helicopter. And then Hijikata, like, has memories of women scorning him for his mayonnaise obsession. Yeah. The, and they, he's like, that's it, I'm the defender of true love. And he has, like, a mayonnaise laser. Mayonnaise 13. <laughs> <laughs> and he shoots their fucking helicopter out of the sky. And then the, the woman, like, falls in love with him. And she's like, I'll break up with this poopy pants idiot right now. <laughs> And he, uh, he gives this long speech about how he's the pr- defender of true love. Mm-hmm. And the minute he helps them, they're like, fuck it. Oh, we don't even want to be together. And he's like, what? <laughs> and he like falls off the roof. And he goes like, I hate love. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of oh, the Oh, right. They keep, they keep doing the Golgo 13 joke because Kondo's do. like, call me Gorilla 13. It's Gorilla 13. <laughs> Yeah, and then Okita says he's a Sogo 13. Sogo 13. <laughs> yeah, and then Hijikata says he's Mayo 13. Mayo 13. I think, what do they call themselves? Mayo 13, own? the defender of love. We're the assassin samurai 13. <laughs> That's what they say before they shoot him down. Or they try and shoot him down. I also forgot to mention, we have to go back to the last episode. I forgot completely, but thank God I made a note. When Ship- when Shimpachi asks for help for love and the fruit the fruit punch samurai says, uh, don't put that shit here, he says, What do I do, fruit punch samurai? And then his response is, I'm not fruit punch samurai, I'm Katsura. Yeah, I'm not fruit punch samurai, I'm Katsura. He's like, What why why would why did you why'd you put that yeah, in the name? Says, so why bother with the name? Oh, I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> All right, to go back to this one. This episode is so fucking... Maybe it is this because... Oh, man, no. Where do I start with this? This one's so... So I really like this episode. I think this is finally the uh, the old man kind of... Because he's in the previous episode as the... Um, oh, man, I forgot. We have to talk about the beginning of this one, which is the end of the last one. Okay, so start. Um... I really like at the beginning of 35 with the cat girl. Apparently the cat girl is a reference to Cat's Eye, which is a manga and anime. Because her name is called Cat's Ear. I think that's her thief name is called Cat's Ear. And there's a Shonen Jump manga called Cat's Eye, I think anyway. Um, <clears throat> when it's revealed the, the what she is, they go back and then Matsu is like specifically talking about like uh basically telling like that girl was lying the entire time they show specifically like he was already drunk and she approached him and heard his heard him basically bitch and complain about his family and then when they got on the train that's when she started acting weird but he's no molester and also when he's (laughs) when he's trying to explain that he's innocent okita says he's gonna shoot him and he goes he actually shoots him and he tries to frame hijikata (laughs) Yeah, he's like, quick, he's got his gun, he puts the gun in his hand. <laughs> yeah, it's the... I, <laughs> he's I, like, I, he's gone crazy, hell. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
So I like that <laughs> that bit right there with uh, with them. Uh, when Shapachi was tricked, uh, I like when uh, before before he one strikes her. When Kagura and uh, Tay finally go up to fight him, she makes a, she basically they talk a bunch of shit. I think she says specifically, uh, girls who go like. Uh, booty, 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 or something. It's trying to sound cutesy. It sounds like they're talking crap, and apparently that is actually the sound of booty, booty is the sound of someone defecating in Japanese. Uh, and they immediately go to, like, uh, stomp her out, and they can't do it. But then when Shipachi is able to... <laughs> it really does look like he's gonna have, like, this heart-to-heart moment where he's like, it's okay, you know, don't hurt her. And he completely basically goes, psych, and he one <laughs> strikes her and does, like, a cool samurai thing. They even do, like, the old-style samurai films where it's, like, um... After they do, like, a strike. I guess uh, the thing I most remember... You remember in Kirby... When you would do the hit, and then like it would, the screen would go black, and then it's kind of like a fade to the side. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, no, no. You have no idea what I'm talking about. Damn it! All right, no. Either way, they do a samurai thing, which I thought was really funny. Um, and I really do think at this point, based off of Catherine, which I thought was a very different take on a cat girl, and then this cat girl turns out to be a lying fake. That basically, uh, Gintama stands on the fact that actual cat girls aren't shit, <laughs> which I think is a very funny stance to take because it seems like they're super anti. Based off the two cat girls that we've met so far, both being liars and thieves. Yeah, they're like wildly anti cat girl. <laughs> they're so crazy cat girl, which is uh, I thought was super funny because <laughs> it's usually not the thing. They usually the, the cat girl is a super easy way to get someone to just like something, but they're taking the stance of no, actually all cat girls are terrible. Um, and then it is pretty funny that he immediately like takes back all the things that he would have learned and progressed as a person the second that Otsu shows up in the fucking costume. <laughs> When she shows yeah, up with cat he's ears. immediately okay with it. Yeah, he's like, oh, no, too powerful. I like that the the ED plays eight minutes in, which is really funny to really sell home the fact that they actually legitimately had the previous episode end and they are deciding to end it right here and then the OP plays right after the ED, which is funny. Um, there's a part where they're trying to do a previously on bit and uh, Tay says, like, uh, Gintoki, you're doing a terrible job of doing a previously on. Let me do it. He's oh, like, fine, yes. if you can't do it, you do it. And she starts doing it, and then she starts doing the one from episode one. Yeah, the episode one, and he's like, that's too far. Yeah, how far back are you trying to do it? And then, like, um, <laughs> they reveal all the thing with the Shinsengumi, and then it goes back to them, and they're still trying to do the intro. And I forget what Kagura says, but she's also doing the intro, but she's fucking up, and she's, like, not specifically saying, like, oh, her specific previously on was basically, like, I had cake, and it was very delicious. It was very good cake. Yeah, she's like, it was really good. And that's all they had to say about it. Uh, that was funny. The part two episode, which is funny because we talked about it before, even though this is a very weird, like, two-parter in the sense that a lot of the times the two-parters, usually there's one that's really good and the other one's just okay. This is the first one where both of them are actually <laughs> super solid <laughs> and good throughout. Yeah, this... it's, it's rare for that to happen because yeah. Gintama will usually, like, one will hit and one will be, eh. Yeah, a little, the other one will but be, no, like, this okay. was fucking crazy the whole time through. Yes. Both are really good. Both very good. The Shinshingumi, the old man showing up again. And I think this time without um, uh, Sachan there. I think it was actually a little bit better <laughs> with where he got to actually hang out with the Shinshingumi and then continue the fucking. I think I described him as like when specifically Kondo, Okita, and this old man are together, they're like Ghidorah if all the three heads were silly. Because they're so fucking stupid. <laughs> Like, their leaps and logics are, they're like the worst pair of people that you can put together because they will support each other in the worst ideas possible. Yep, <laughs> and just like these awful plans. Yeah, because Matsu is like, I have to shoot him because I don't trust the way he looks. And Kondo's immediately like, yes, you're right, we do have to shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> I watched that girl grow up. She needs a strong, silent man like me. <laughs> So we can't let her go with this kind of guy. And then Hijikata's like, okay, okay, Okita, this is just dumb. Then Okita's like, call. that's when he puts on the uh, the assassin goal. He's like, I'm going to be joining them. <laughs> it looks like fun. And he immediately joins them. 
uh, the gorilla, the Golgo thirteen joke is really funny. Like they do it just enough times where they keep and it gets continuously getting sillier and sillier. Time goes on until finally Mayo thirteen, and also they're also every single time wearing sunglasses, which is really funny. Uh, when they're on the carousel, the horse carousel, and <laughs> and they're riding the horses and they have guns and they're complaining about like we can't get a straight shot. He's smart, and Hijikata's like in the little car for uh, for horses. He's like idiots this is a carousel <laughs> it always goes in circles you're never gonna catch up to him and they're like we didn't know that we've never been on a carousel before in our lives <laughs> the crapping the pants thing super funny when he's got the knife to him and he's specifically talking about like okita will get him to do it because he's a sadist and he can get people to do things yeah <laughs> I also forgot to mention the homeless guy, the one that keeps getting confused for Gintoki, he was in the teacups. When they're spinning around. And what? Oh, he was! That's he right, was. he yeah. was! I was like, <laughs> I took a note of that. I was like, that's great that <laughs> he's just there. Um, when Okita... It was, <laughs> Okita uh, didn't fasten his seatbelt, so he actually falls behind the rest of them. And it's really funny, because he's like, I was so focused on getting him to crap himself, I didn't think about my own safety. <laughs> Yeah, he's, like, hanging from the the back of the thing. Yeah, he's hanging from it, and it's super good. Uh, when he shits himself, uh, it's really good. <laughs> Which is funny, because we talked about, like, there's a lot of crap humor, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. This is a case where it 100% works. It worked, like, so well, because it was just so fucking funny. Yeah, the, I think it, the, the dramatic music helped it a whole bunch, but hit the realization when the daughter says, like, I also crap myself, and they're so happy about it. Um, and then he reveals later on when they talk about specifically the boyfriend changed clothes, but she didn't. Um, it's, so that's a sign that she actually genuinely cared about him, which was what Hijikata says, because it's like, if she actually shit herself, she would have changed her clothes, but she didn't only he did. So that means that she did it out of love to make him not feel embarrassed. And he sees it as like, oh my God, this is a girl who truly understands love and the backstory they have for him. The whole reason that he's so, like, trying to be like, don't judge a book by its cover is that he gets rejected by women because of his deep mayonnaise love. <laughs> Which, a... by the way, <clears throat> the story of um, he uh, shit himself and so she said that she did too is exactly what the backstory of Shimpachi's friend is. It is one hundred percent. If you, she was right. <laughs> Tay was right. If someone shits himself, Tay was shit right the them. whole time. Oh my god, she was one hundred percent right. That's why she's one hundred percent the best girl in the entire show because she was right. A true woman stands behind a true person, and a friend stands behind a person who shits himself. <laughs> um. Oh fuck, that makes it all the more better when you, now that you mentioned it. Yeah, that is a callback to the shitting yourself. And <laughs> it's fighting. literally the exact same thing. Oh my god. Uh, but yeah, him that backstory of his with the mayonnaise w was really good because when he <laughs> when he shows them the mayonnaise dish, the super special that he made, and all of them are immediately like, oh, oh my god, terrible. They like scream. Yeah, they're yeah. like horrified. It is also a reference, kind of a reference back to the panty episode where specifically he gets mad because he was given panties by Okita. Well, he thought it was a panty thief, but it was actually Okita, where he, because it would made it seem like he was an unlovable asshole like <laughs> the other dudes were, like he was on that tier. And to see that he actually does have hangups with specifically love is really nice uh, sticking to the character in that uh, essence. And also when he shows up as Mayo 13 and he's just so cool with his stupid mayonnaise gun <laughs> with his super mayonnaise the laser. The mayonnaise laser. The defender of love and the way that the girl immediately dumps her poopy pants. <laughs> Boyfriend. Yeah, I, I'll dump this poopy pants loser. Dump this poopy pants loser. He's like, what? And then they both fall over and he's just like, I hate love. And that was the entire episode. <laughs> Oh, I really oh, am so good. Yeah. It's so good. It is. And I think this finally, I think, cements my feeling, which is I really like the shits and Gooby and your dumb, stupid antics. Now that they have enough time to kind of get together and do things, I think they're generally the funniest, like in the part two of the episode in 32. I love when the Shinshin Gumi show up there and then them showing up here is great. In general, as long as they're there, as long as they have the core team there, even Kondo, I think, has gone in 
much better with his dumbassness forgetting himself and him holding the Just Away dolls. Even, and even this man who showed up Just Away is this so fucking funny. Yeah. But I think I'm at the... I'm, I'm sold on them. I'm basically like, yeah, I'm there with them. I'm yeah, there with I them. really like the Shinsengumi now. They're great. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I'm glad it's that you could stupid. finally come to it because I was glad when I saw that person say like, oh yeah, they're fan favorites. I'm like, really? I'm going to be interested in seeing it. And if it's stuff like this, I can see why. <laughs> Because it's so, it was just so good. It's just it, fantastic shit all around. <laughs> good stuff. Uh, and yeah, good ass episode. And yeah, I think that, damn it, this part is so good. It If you take into the consideration of specifically the parts of 34 and 35, and you consider it as a two-parter, that basically stands toe-to-toe with me on 31 and 32 for me in terms of like, it's that strong, it's that funny, it's that good. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah. The, the whole episode was fucking funny. Like, uh, a lot of them, like, especially when they lean into the poop humor in the past has not been very funny. And, like, the poop aspect of it isn't funny, but it's the absurd, like, seriousness with which they treat the command. Yes, the the crap the, the crap yourself command. They're they're evolving. Is that they're the the poop jokes aren't? They're basically saying the same, but they're being smart. <laughs> they're better being betterly delivered. Basically, there's a, there's a there's a an art to joke delivery that makes it good. If you just tell someone to crap themselves and you put like the silly music and you go boom 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 boom, it's not going to be as funny. But if you treat it as super serious like they do here, then it's good. It's the it's it's they basically... make it like such a big deal. It's so fucking funny. Yes, they they're they're get they're getting the right groove in it. They're finding their poop groove into the right way of delivering <laughs> the poop humor. So yeah, this is the, give your uh, uh, you have any more thoughts on those were my thoughts on it. Really good episode, really strong when you consider both of them together as one with so many jokes and stuff like that. Uh, how do you? Yeah, feel? just crazy good episode. Loved it, mm-hmm. loved it to death. High quality. <laughs> That's good shit right there. That's just some good shit. Yeah, the the fucking joke when he like gives the speech about how he's like. I'll always defend love. And then she's like, I will leave his ass right now. <laughs> Let's go. He's just so cool in that exact moment. Uh, and he's like so caught off guard by it. He really did believe in love for that brief moment. And then they made him disbelieve in it. Oh, it's so fucking hilarious. It is really well done. Man, and that is, uh, those were the five episodes of Gintama. Some strong ass five. This might be the strongest five episodes we've had so far for the show. I think so, yeah. Because the weakest one was like the Mokichi episode, which was still really yeah. good. Still, yeah, real, still real nice and still real good. So, good job on them. I can't wait to see if it. I hope. I just can't wait to see more from it at this point. It's growing on me, and it's doing a lot of good stuff for me. I really do enjoy talking about it a whole bunch. And we're almost done with... Yeah, uh, Gintama, Gintama goes crazy. It's really good. Yes. We're almost done with season one, too. And Yeah, we're really close, are we? Yeah, we're really close. Let me see. Uh, we have 33 through... Because next, uh, next week, we will try to do episode uh try to do episodes 36 37 uh 38 39 and 40 and then from then it will be 10 episodes until the end of basically season one yeah we are close yeah yeah then (coughs) tearing through this shit yeah and then more arcs will start after that though that's a lot of arcs similar to the last one where it's like a couple actually seeing some of these some of these do have more episodes in it but it seems very similar to like most arcs will have one or two episodes in it two or three so far yeah either one or two (laughs) one or two they'll have either two or three episodes for arcs is what i'm looking at from based off of the chart that i'm seeing here so gonna be interesting to go into that stuff and yeah, it's we're gonna we're gonna make our way through. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Gintama's pretty good. Yeah, I'm um, I'm looking forward to continuing going. Gintama has been really good so far. Yeah, and I can't wait to get to some of the higher up there stuff that is super <laughs> well liked and talking about that stuff. 
All right, everyone, that is the end for Shonen Archive. Thank you very much for joining us all the way, all the way here at the end. As I said, next coming episode, well, the next episode is actually going to be Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, so feel free to see Yu-Gi-Oh! GX where we talk about 6 through 10. But if you're waiting for Gintama, just wait a week and we will go through episodes 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. And if we are too busy, we will at least do two episodes, so don't worry about that. Yeah, we'll, there will always be some Gintama in your future. Mm -hmm. but thank you very much for joining us as always feel free to leave a comment telling us about how you feel about it it's funny actually someone in the comments saw that because there, there's actually someone who writes a lot of detailed things as they're watching which is really great because I can tell what part they are on the <laughs> on the video based on the comments about what episode and what comment we're doing <laughs> so always feel free to say whatever you want in uh, about whatever episode we're talking about um, let me see what are the some of the big ones, Hal, uh, Hal Nix and Arcane Reviews, some people like that, they talk about it. Arcane Reviews was the one who noticed, like, oh, damn, someone's really going to town <laughs> with how much they're giving into it. And I feel, go ahead and give whatever uh, stuff you want to talk about, and I'll gladly read it and sometimes respond. Uh, maybe not all the time, or it, you might, it might be a while because I'm a very busy person. But it's always nice to see comments is basically what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> and feel free <laughs> yeah. to see what we'll do our best. Yes. And we will see you guys in the next show on Archive. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, crap yourself. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> I was going to say the other one. I was like, no, I can't say the other one. <laughs> can't do it from the other one. But either way, goodbye, everyone.